The following program was produced by an independent community producer. The opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the ECAT staff or board of directors. Giving a voice to the voiceless, pulling stories out of the shadows and putting them under the spotlight, making sure that each person is valued and cared for. This is Humanity First with Peter Evers, presented by BAMZ. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Humanity First. My name is Peter Evers, your host, uh, as usual, and as usual, periodically, Chris Ryan, um, who is a, uh, a the voice of New Hampshire, is uh, joining us to talk a little bit about the primaries and what's going on, because all eyes after Iowa have turned to New Hampshire. Um, and um, there's a lot going on at the moment. And Chris, I guess I would start by asking this question. Um, a guy who has a number of lawsuits uh, pending, he's actually in court in a defamation case where he's been found um, responsible uh, for sexual assault, uh, who has uh, also been um, taken off the ballot in some states because of treason, um, doesn't go to any of the debates at all uh, with uh, his um, uh, with who is against on the Republican ticket, and he wins by a landslide in Iowa. There's a guy on the TV the other night, and many people may have seen it, who says the following: "You know what? I hate to say this, but America needs a dictator. We got to get rid of that Roosevelt resolution, and he's got to be president for a lifetime. America needs a dictator now." I would have thought that there are many people in this country who think about their parents, uh, who think about what a couple of world wars did for us and the, and the fact that many people fought for freedom and democracy. And it's a little odd that all of that is happening in this country. Why? Why is that happening? What has happened that's given uh, uh, this former president a pathway, as it seems, to the White House? That's People feel that America is broken, and um, there's two different divisions when it comes to that, right? There's that the our founders were brilliant. They uh, created documents and systems of government that um, will allow for America to continue to be prosperous and continue to, you know, be the beacon of freedom to folks, you know, across the the world, and that's these problems are ones that are solvable. And uh, there are others that believe that, no, this is fundamentally broken. They don't really quite understand what, you know, our system of governments look, uh, governance looks like. They have been fed you know, negative um, news for years and years and years. They have expectations that are off in terms of what their own lives should, should look like um, because they've seen so many other, you know, visions of what they think their lives should look like via social media. Um, America has, you know, a lot of a lot of problems, and um, it, our system of governments is one that is very, uh, you know, is very gradual, and um, we are a society that has moved beyond being gradual, and is one that demands instant gratification. You can't get instant gratification via our system of governance, and so the society is demanding that they're not demanding, but the society is more perceptible to that type of leadership than it has been in the past. And yet Nikki Haley is on TV in Massachusetts all the time. And, it, and one of the things she says is 72% um, of the people in America do not want to um, 80 year olds um, running in this election. And yet it seems that's what we're going to get. That seems to be really counterintuitive to me when people are saying we want a, a dictator. And I guess the the, the last piece I want to tag on to that is, uh, is four years enough uh, for a term for a president? Is that something that we should be thinking about? Um. I mean, obviously, this came about during, as you referenced earlier, when you know Franklin Roosevelt was president, and you know just kept getting reelected and reelected, and ended up that he was, you know, uh, not well um, health wise towards you know the end of his uh, his presidency. Um, so, is the should the term be four limits or six? Uh, so, it should it be four years or six years or eight years? Um, I think the four years works. Uh, I think that, you know, we should constantly be 
questioning and evaluating, you know, what are, uh, you know, whether things are working or not. Uh, but I think four years is is sufficient. But back to the point on um, Haley. I mean, Haley has not really wanted to, you know, take on Trump as directly as she's wanted to take on her other opponents. And the same can be said for, you know, DeSantis um, as well. They have, you know, gone after each other, Haley and DeSantis, really hard and aggressive, but they have not gone after Trump. And there's, as you mentioned, this dynamic of most Americans and they respond to polls say they don't want a Trump versus Biden rematch. But, you know, for a Trump voter that responds to that, they don't want Biden. For a Biden voter that responds to that, they don't want Trump. So that kind of adds to that that dynamic. Um, and, you know, most of these primaries, unlike New Hampshire, are closed. And they, the Republican Party, even though a year ago um, they looked like they're ready to move on from Trump to DeSantis, uh, they have looked at the polls and said that Trump can win and that Trump can beat Biden. And, um, you know, they like the way that he aggressively takes on Democrats. And um, so their Republicans have become comfortable with a Trump nomination. And therefore, that's where we're headed. Yeah. And I was listening to Tim Scott the other day, who is one of those people that I always used to think, the, the Minnesota guy, that when he was governor, that he was um, somebody who was quite reasonable, someone who was quite middle of the road. Uh, although I think has drifted to the right over the last few years. But, uh, you know, listening to him um, talk about Trump, he sees a pathway of, of righteousness almost for Trump that, listen, he did a lot of things that he said he was going to do in his four, in in his first four years, and he needs a chance to come back and finish those things. I mean, I, I suppose as an observer of politics, I was a little a little confused about that. But, you know, give him the benefit of the doubt, along comes COVID and it stops a lot of things and a, a great deal of uh, of our expenses, um, you know, and, and contributions uh, to the deficit came from that period of time. Um, is Tim Scott really echoing what Republicans feel at the moment, that this is the only candidate who can possibly beat Biden? Um... I think that, you know, the polling indicates that any of them can beat Biden, but um, they have this, I mean, the Republican Party is that of Donald Trump at this point. I mean, there's MAGA him, there's future MAGA in Vivek Ramaswamy and uh, um, and Rick, and Ron DeSantis, and then there's MAGA light in, you know, Nikki Haley, but it's the party of of MAGA. I mean, we had folks come in here and, and like Mike Pence and Asa Hutchinson and Doug Burgum and Haley to some extent, like touting the Reagan Republicanism. That's gone. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. it's it's Trump's party. It's a party that's focused on populism that um, says that Republicans stand up for working people and their values more than Democrats do who are aligned with, you know, Wall Street elite, elites and so forth. So. I mean, it, it's it is he is the vessel, right? And so they view him they view him as being a power that has kind of won over the party. And you can either um, be a part. He is the establishment. Like you can either be a part of what he stands for um, and reap some benefits from that, or you can be thrown to the sidelines and not have a role in the Republican Party anymore. And, you know, just as the case of the past, the establishment always wins because people want to be close to power. They want to have access to uh, to power. And so you if those that fight it and lose end up on the sidelines. Those that um, suck up to it and um, and kiss the ring are a part of uh, of the of the power. Um, and that's what's happened. Well, you could argue that those people who did suck up to the ring, as you say, ended up being cast aside anyway. I mean, there's a long, long road of cast offs that uh, that the uh, former president trump uh, bought in and nikki haley is a good a good example last night um he said in his sort of typical way uh yeah 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 i worked with her she was okay but not great but not great and then you know of course the the uh, the liberal media as they say um put a, a picture up a, a, a film up of the of both of them saying this is one of the most fantastic negotiators etc cetera, etc cetera. um we don't have permanent friends we don't have permanent enemies we just have permanent interests right and so you know as we move into this this new era it's not that new but we're of of people on these polemic sides does that mean we have more independence here you talked about closed 
primaries before, does that mean that independents are growing by the minute? People who are getting fed up with a Democratic Party that keeps, you know, coming up with the same old uh, faces and the same old policies, a Republican Party that is drifting further and further to the right, where some of its members, and 30 percent of them maybe want a dictatorship. Surely middle America is becoming independent. Is that right? It is, but um, you know the independents are without a home. There's a two-party system. We're going to see, you know, third-party candidates. They're going to run to what level of success, you know, we shall see. But um, you know, the the independent is not necessarily all that engaged. In fact, you know, they may not vote. They need to hear what they want to hear in order to uh, to get out to vote and to be uh, to be motivated to do so. So. Yeah, I mean, there is a silent majority in this country of people that, you know, just raise their families, go to work, um, do drive their kids to sporting events, um, and they're just trying to pay their bills and want solutions to problems and feel that America isn't working for them. So this kind of brings it back full circle to the dictatorship side of things where don't quite understand the way the government works, um, feels that it's too slow and is ineffective. It's uh, filled with individuals that serve their own self-interests and are corrupt. Um, and therefore, they're looking for something they can believe in. They're looking for hope, somebody that's going to stand up for them. And they're tired of politicians that um, haven't been able to deliver. So they're looking for you know, something that's a little bit new. And Trump, um, Trump has tapped into that group. And for whatever reason, Despite broken promises, um, despite the indictments and the uh, the knowledge that he's not a great person, uh, they don't care. They think that he stands up for their values and that the rest of the people are just as bad as him. But maybe they pick on him a little bit more because he's actually fighting for um, for for working people in this country, and they're not. So just going back to what you said. And that's a really frightening thing that there's an awful lot of these people who are disconnected from the political discourse, that they're not interested in having a conversation about politics. And I don't blame them because the the amount of aggression, the amount of anger, the amount of fury there is uh, on both sides really does close out the sort of middle ground for people. Is that dangerous for democracy when large amounts of people go around their, about their business, walking their dog, and do not want anything to do what's happening with what's happening in politics? Yeah, I mean, democracy dies in those types of situations because the role of citizen, the role of voters holding um, politicians accountable, that's what you know keeps a healthy democracy together. Instead, we've moved to the fringes and those fringes you know, ostracizing um, all that is left and disenfranchising them because they just don't want to um, put up with that smoke. They don't want to hear, they don't want to, they don't care enough to, um, you know, to go through all the, the vitriol and the anger to try to, to, to uh, you know, engage in the, in the process. They feel their vote doesn't really matter all that much compared to the special interests. And therefore it's a waste of their time to be invested in politics. Are so they right? That happens just the... Yeah, when that that happens, the the lobbyists rule, um, and you you create an environment that you know we're in right now. Yeah, I mean, I just wonder if they're right. I mean, you know, there's been a lot of gerrymandering on either side. You know, over the years, uh, people have been sort of uh, shoehorned into particular areas. There've been there's been skullduggery around where voting booths are, are placed. Um, you know, there, you might say that many of these actions taken. Uh, by the parties are anti-democratic, that they are absolutely steeped in the idea of we win at all costs. And I think that does reflect uh, strongly on this idea of, well, it doesn't matter, you know, it do, where I live, it doesn't matter. And there are people who are more powerful than me who will be able to um, bend the arc of the political system towards them. Um, and I don't, I don't know if people are that wrong about that, Chris. Well, I would say that, you know, in the past, um, those interests, the special interests, the corruption, and, you know, all that was much more um, prevalent than even today. And it didn't stop individuals in the civil rights movement from protesting and in some cases dying in order to be able to uh, to vote. Um, and for many of our, as you're referencing earlier, Many of our ancestors, you know, fighting and dying in order to preserve the idea of America. 
So um, people have decided that that you know scrolling death scrolling TikTok for uh, hours of their lives is more important than um, going to the local town meeting and uh, you know standing up for what they believe in. Um, it's it's a conscious decision. I mean, there is ostracization. There is a, a fact that Republicans and Democrats don't want people to be heavily involved and engaged. Um, they want to do what they want to do. They don't want to have to meet with voters. They don't want to have to do, do constituent services. Um, so, but it's also on us as individuals. I mean, we we get the government that we deserve. And so um, we are, you know, uh, kind of death scrolling our way to a dictatorship uh, one way or the other, um, because we don't really want to have the patience or the desire to be engaged. That's a pretty, that's a pretty awful statement. I mean, I think it's true. I think you're right. And I think back to I was reading about the Gettysburg uh, address the other day and about how why Abe Lincoln made that speech. Um, the cynics would say he was about to lose an election because the people of America, especially in the North, were fed up with fighting a war. But he went out, he left Washington for the first time during his pre presidency to reach out to the people. He made that speech and then people said, God bless Abe Lincoln. I think there's much more room to get back to some of those roots in politics of really reaching out and connecting with people and letting know them their message. Unfortunately, at the moment, it seems like um, each party wants to wants to put down the other party in terms of what they've done. You think about Biden, he's done quite a few things, you know, whether you agree with him or not, you know, he's done quite a few things that he said he would do. Same with Trump, actually. He did some things in terms of tax reform, in terms of building a wall. Yet each side says they never do anything and nothing gets done. It's chaotic. So no wonder people think nothing's happening, right? Right. I mean, uh, politics generally, you it's, it's a binary choice. All you have to do is be better than your opposition. Um, so it's much better and more effective to be negative and to um, focus on the opposition's weakness than it is to try to tout your own uh, strengths. So, um, you know, election after election, it's not being the best candidate. It's just being better than the other person. You know, Biden says often, I don't have to be uh, better than the almighty. I just have to be better than the alternative. Um, and, you know, for Trump, he is a master at that. Uh, he will make if you may he may look bad, but he will make you look a thousand times worse. He is really good at finding individuals um, biggest weaknesses, his opposition and nicknaming it and mm -hmm. then pounding away at it. And then when people look at the opposition, they're like, oh, yeah, he is job. right about that. <laughs> yeah. And so like DeSantis was a classic example. DeSantis was leading Trump in the polls. Well, here in New Hampshire is an example. He was up 44 to 30 a year from now in the UN, uh, a year ago in the UNH poll. And he gave him a nickname. He pointed out his weaknesses. DeSantis didn't really respond for five months. And He's his, uh, his, yeah, his, uh, his horse has ridden. Yeah. Well, Chris, we're running out of time, but as usual, thanks so much for these um, thoughts on on what's going to happen. Um, I I remain a little bit pessimistic about the future, but you never know. Um, there have been people who have come on the scene and burst onto the scene in history um, who have really changed the direction of an election, and maybe that's going to happen. I don't know, but uh, thank you so much, Chris. Really appreciate your insights. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Bye, everybody. See you next week. Hi, I'm Jamie. I'm an essential worker here at BAMZ and I'm a nurse. Nurses are essential here at BAMZ because as nurses, we really have the opportunity to make an impact. We have very small ratios, so we have the opportunity to really learn everything about the person served and be able to give the best care. It really serves such a great purpose for me as being a nurse and really why I came into nursing. Learn more about nursing opportunities at BAMZjobs.org.